I'm excited po to be here with you this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles po, uh, let's start. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 to 9. Tapos mag-jump po tayo sa verses 13 to 15. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9, and then 13 to 15 po. So what is worship? Yung po title natin for our message today, what is worship? What is worship? Okay, so um, um, here begins the reading of God's word. It says there, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Verse 5, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Verse 6, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Verse 8, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So parang meron po kayong sign between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Let, let's jump po to verse 13 hanggang 15 po. Asabi po doon, it is the Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples who are around you. Verse 15, for the Lord your God is in your midst, in your midst is a jealous God, lest the anger of the, of the Lord your God be kindled against you, and he destroy you from off the face of the earth. Now, a little bit lang po ng um, explanation na po dito sa last verse natin. Pag sinasabi po ng Biblia, the Lord your God is a jealous God. Hindi po yung jealousy na nafeel po natin. It's very different po. When the Bible says that God is a jealous God, it means that He demands your whole affection. He demands your whole attention. He should be the God of your life. Pag sinasabi po natin, God, ano po bang nasa isip po natin? Dapat po siya ang supreme over all. Amen? So when we say that God, you are my God, we are declaring God's authority as number one in our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 So, a little bit of question lang po before I share four points with you po. What is worship? Okay, four points lang po. And I will flash yung mga points ko po doon sa, dito po sa screen. So, if you want to take notes. So, one of the questions I want to ask you this morning po is, ano po ba ang, uh, ano po ba ang ginagawa po natin from day to day? What are we busy with? So, a lot of us po, we're busy with work. Nasa bahay po tayo, dahil po natin ginagawa. 6 a.m. hanggang 10 p.m. po yata ang inyo pong ano, schedule, no? So, it's, it's, we're all busy with very different things. But then, another question na po is, where do we spend our money on? Where do we put our, our, uh, our resources? Saan po ba natin, um, ano po ba ang mga, in, how do we spend our money? How do we spend our time? And who do we love the most in our life? Okay? So, just a little bit of background lang po and meaning to the word worship. It comes from the old English that's called worship. Diba? Sinabi po natin kanina dun sa ating prayer that God is worthy of our praise. So, when we say that we worship someone or something, ibig sabihin, we acknowledge that this person or this thing is worthy of our love, is worthy of our time, is worthy of our resources. Amen? Naintindihan po natin? Amen. Amen. So, when we say worship, we worship God, it means that you and I are acknowledging that God is worthy of everything that we have. Amen? So, the question today is, who are you worshiping in your life? It is very easy to say, Paul, that I worship Jesus. Kasi I go to church every Sunday. I'm, I'm present doon. Ako pinakauna doon sa prayer Zoom meeting natin, Sister Elika. Makita mo yung mukha ko nandoon. Makikita mo na, marinig mo ako, mag amen ako ng malakas. But the thing is po, how we spend our time, who we love the most, what is our priority, or who is our priority, shows us who we truly worship. Alam niyo po, notice niyo po, someone who worships their children. I'm not saying it's bad to love your children because we are called to love our children unconditionally. Amen? Amen. Wala po akong anak, but I, I know that as a mother po, that you want to love on your children, you want to give them 
uh, you know, the best that you can give unto them. Yung mga things that you didn't experience when you were a child, you want them to experience that. Yung goodness at yung, yung, ano, yung um, overflowing na, na provision then. But I would like to warn you today that you should not make your children as number one in your life. Dapat po ang Panginoong Jesus po ang number ones in yung buhay. Hindi din po ba natin? Because it says here in our main text po, ano po ang sabi doon sa Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, na binasa po natin kanina, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Yes, love your children. Provide for them. Love them unconditionally. But above all, God should be number one in your life. So who are you worshiping today? Some people, they worship themselves. Kung kung ano-ano na lang nilalagay sa mukha, kung ano-ano na lang, <laughs> paano kung shopping, kung saan-saan na lang shopping, because I need to treat myself. I deserve to be happy. I deserve all of this happiness. So I'll buy things for myself, make myself feel good. Myself, me, myself, and I. Where is God in the picture? Where is God in your life? Hindi ka na lang magtatides kasi I deserve to to uh, I deserve to enjoy yung aking salary. But God tells us if you truly say you are a Christian, you call yourself a Christian, you have to prioritize me in your life. So I would like to share with you po point number one. What does it mean to truly worship God? flash na ko To worship God is to love Him above all. Love Him above all. Sa binasa po natin dito, God tells us, demands of us, requires of us, that if we say we follow Him, we love Him with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our might. You, with all of our might, a little bit of note lang po, no? Some of us po here, binibigay na lang po natin sa Panginoon. Ako, I'm also guilty of that sometimes. Binibigay na lang po natin sa Panginoon ang leftover time natin. Leftover energy. Leftover uh, resources. Leftover, leftover na lang. Parang kawawa naman din po, Panginoon, no? You know, everything that we have, the life that we have, the air that we breathe, it all came from God. And so, if we understand that, we will know that Everything that I have, I cannot boast. Hindi ako pwede mag, mag, malaki sa Panginoon. That's why I should give Him the best. It says in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40. Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40. Meron po nag-challenge sa Panginoon Jesus. Ano ang greatest commandment in the law? So it says there, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37. And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it, verse 39. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, verse 40, depend all the law and the prophets. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Dapat po talaga, your entire being is to love God, to worship God, to honor Him in your life. Ito pong Luke chapter 14. Wag mo na po tayong matutulog. Okay? Gising po ba tayong lahat? Amen! Ano mong tumatawad? Luke 14, 25 to 27. Kasi po, alam niyo po ba, ang mga tao po, you don't need to teach them how to worship. Because we all worship something or someone. Ang question lang talaga po doon is, who are you worshiping? No? Some people worship money. Yes. Po natin? Yeah. Some people, they depend on their savings. They work so hard so that I can have new house and that na gusto ko para maipakita ko sa inyo. Lahat na nagsasabing uh, walang kwenta ako na meron talaga akong worth. You know? Stuff like that. So, God is reminding us today that if we love Him, we should put Him first. Amen. Okay. Luke 14, 25 to 27, New Living Translation. And type a large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, verse 26, If you want to be my disciple, you must, by comparison, hate everyone else. Your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. 
Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. Verse 27, and if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Sister Elika, Jesus taught us to hate people. No, okay? Let's read again, Paul. And sabi doon sa verse 26. If you want to be my disciple, you must, ano po yung word na nandito? Love me more. By comparison. Nasaan po ba dito? You want to be my father, you must love me more than your own father. Uh, even otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. In another newer version, version po ng uh, NLT, sa so updated version po, nakalagay po doon, by comparison. So when Jesus says, Compared sa pagmamahal mo sa mga anak mo, compared sa pagmamahal mo sa mga kayamanan mo, compared sa pagmamahal mo sa uh, asawa mo, sa mga kapatid mo, dapat ako ang number one sa inyong buhay. That is what it means to truly love God. If you want to be called a disciple of Jesus, you must put Him first in your life. And He says po in John 14, Verses 23 to 24. Ang mga nagmamahal po sa Panginoong Jesus ay mag-oobey sa Kanya. Jesus replied, All those who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them and we will come to them and live with them. Verse 24. Anyone who doesn't love me will not do what I say. And remember, my words are not my own. This message is from the Father who sent me. Jesus is very clear here po. Kung talagang mahal niyo po siya, you will follow what his word says. This is a very hard teaching actually. Ano ba mga sister Alika? Umagang umaga. Ito mga, ito ang tiniteach mo na parang hirap naman tong gawin. Mahirap po talaga if we try on our own strength. And that is why we have the Holy Spirit who will help us to obey God. But first and foremost, po, we must desire to obey God. We must desire to love Him with all of our hearts. Alam niyo po, iniisip ko na lang po, kawawa po isang tao na wala pong purpose and meaning sa buhay, kundi lang myself, my family, my children. Para bang, it's such a lonely life. But if you are someone who has accepted Christ into your life, you now have a new purpose. You now have a new meaning in life. Amen. Alam ko po, madami po sa atin dito, naka-experience na po ng katapada ng Panginoon. Amen. Amen. And so, if we think about it, how blessed we are and how undeserving we are. Kasi many times po, binibigay po tayo ng Panginoon ng very best. Yung mga, yung, yung answers to our prayers po, it's more than enough. But sometimes, we are lazy to go to church, we're lazy to read our Bibles, and all that kind of stuff. Pero praise God that God still loves us. Amen. Kaya po, in light of that, mahalin po natin ng Panginoon. Ibigay po natin sa Kanya ating buhay. Ito pong buhay po natin, it's very short. Kahit na 100 years old na po kayong, uh, mayroon na po ba 100 years old dito? <laughs> Wala pa po. Ibigay po natin ang ating buhay sa Panginoon because He gave us His one and only Son to die for us upon the cross. Sino po pwede magsabi dito na mabait na mabait? Mabait po talaga sila. Wala. <laughs> Hindi ako mabait. If we are truly honest with ourselves, we know we do not deserve the kind of love that God has given us. But He still loves you. He is still calling you to Himself. He is still blessing you even you know you don't deserve it. What kind of love is this? Kaya po, ibigay po natin sa Panginoon ang very best because He gave us His best. He gave us His one and only Son. Amen? So to worship God is to obey Him. To worship God is to love Him above all. Yun po ang point number one. Point number two. So yung binasa po natin doon sa main text natin, Deuteronomy 6, verse 13. Basahin ko lang po ulit as we have review. It is the Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve and by His name you shall swear. So to worship God, point number two is to fear Him above all. Fear Him above all. Ito pong fear dito, hindi po yung natatakot po kayo sa Panginoon. Like you're afraid. When the Bible says, fear the Lord, it means that you have a very deep respect. 
Deep reverential fear of the Lord is to have a deep respect. Ito pong deep respect na ito is you fear God more than you fear men. You fear to disobey God than rather than disobeying men. For example po dito, if example your employer tells you to do something you know is wrong, you do not do it because you fear God more than you fear your employer. And then po natin? So we will choose not to do certain things because we fear God more than we fear the rejection of men. Example po, yung mga, dati yung po mga kaibigan, they will invite you to go to places na madilim. <laughs> madilim. At meron po mga ginagawang mga something somethings. Something. You, will not, you will not do it because you fear God more than you fear the rejection of your friends. Amen. Nakikita, alam niyo po na nakikita kayo ng Panginoon. Ang sabi po dito sa Matthew chapter 10, verses 28 to 31. Kaya po, pag sinasabi natin, we worship God, we fear Him above all. Matthew 10, 28 to 31. Let's read it po. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill you. They can only kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Verse 29. Not even a sparrow worth only half a penny can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Verse 31. So don't be afraid you are more valuable to him than a whole flock of sparrows. Tinan natin po yung verse 28. Ito pong context nito is Jesus was warning his disciples na because they believe in him, mapapersecute po sila by the people around them. So parang in encourage po ni Jesus na wag, wag kayong matakot because, you know, these people can only say stuff. These people can only hurt you physically, but they cannot hurt what is deep down inside you, which is the most important thing, which is your soul. Okay? Fear only God. So, there is a lesson for us here today. Wag po tayong matakot na ma-reject ng mga tao because of our faith in Jesus. Wag po tayong matakot na pagtawanan because at the end of the day, they are not the ones who will pay for pay for your hindi po sila magbabayad ng inyong mga utang. Amen. Hindi po sila magpo-provide para sa inyong mga anak. Amen. Only God can do that for you. Amen. And makita po natin in Acts chapter 5 verses 27 to 29. Meron po sinabi dito ang mga apostles that we should also say in ourselves, ang sabi po doon, Acts 5, 27 to 29, a little bit lang po of context, na, 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 ang nangyari po dito, nagpipreach po sila sa mga iba't ibang mga tao about the name of Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus! You know, uh, there is hope in Jesus. So, nangyari po, nagalit po yung mga religious leaders at that time. Nagalit sila, and then they brought all of the apostles together and told them, do not preach in the name of Jesus. You're not allowed to preach anymore. So it's so verse 37, and when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, verse 28, saying, we strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. In verse 29, but Peter and the apostles answered, ano po ang answer nila? We must obey God rather than men. We must obey God rather than men. That is what it means to fear God above all. Na kahit na hindi po nakikita ng ibang tao kung ano pong ginagawa po ninyo, you will still be honest. Amen? Amen. That is what it means to fear God above all. Example po, uh, wag po kayong magsisteal ng time. Wala si Amo ngayon. Sige, go! Kung ano na kinagawa. Okay, Facebook na lang muna ako. As mamaya, mabalik siya ng mga 5 o'clock. Sige, mag, ano na lang ako. Mag, mag start na lang ako maglinis mga 3. 2 hours! Okay lang yun. We must be, we must be honest po, no? With Amen. our time, with our resources. Because God sees everything. Amen. Amen. So we must fear God above all. We must obey God rather than men. So, that is what it means to worship God, is to fear Him above all. Fear God above all. Um, I would like to add on a, a verse for Dylan. Deuteronomy 6, verses 24 to 25, English Standard Version. 
Okay? Deuteronomy 6, 24 to 25. May sinabi po doon, napakaganda po. 6, 24 to 25. And the Lord commanded us to do all of these statutes, or ito po, ito po mga commandments, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that He might preserve us alive as we are this day. Nakita, po, nakita niyo po ba? No, just stay in verse 24 po yan. To fear the Lord our God for whose good? For our good. For our good. All of the commandments that God has put in His Word, in the Holy Bible, is for your good. Amen. For your good always. So if you choose to obey God, you choose to fear Him above all, to honor Him in your life, you will be preserved by God. Amen. Protected by God. Alam niyo po, the worst place to be is to be outside of the will of God. Why? Because the protection of God will no longer be upon you. So if you are following God, you know you're honoring God in your life, kahit ano sabihin ng ibang mga tao, you don't care. I don't care. Because I know that the blessing and favor of God is upon me because I am in the center of His will. Amen. Amen? Amen. So you point number two, to worship God is to fear Him above all. Number three. Very quiet. Okay. Number three. To worship God is to serve Him. Serve God. Like na mentioned ko po kanina, ang iba't ibang mga tao po, some of them live to serve their children. Some of them live to serve themselves. Some of them live to serve somebody else. But not to serve God. Ang sabi po sa Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Ang sabi po doon. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you, I beg you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will accept. When you think of what He has done for you, is this too much to ask? Meron pong isang version po nandoon sa NKJV, New King James Version. Ang sinabi po doon, the New King James Version, Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Ito pong reasonable service na ito, yung word na service po is worship. This is the, the right way that you should worship God. By giving your all to Him. By giving your whole self to serve Him. To serve His purposes in your life. Remember po, na mention ko po sa inyo, that everything that we have, this life that we have, it came from God. We were created to worship God. We were created to have fellowship with God. So let us present ourselves to God as a holy and living sacrifice. That is true worship. Worship to serve Him. Alam niyo po, ang pagsuserve po, hindi lang po yan sa ministry. Sister Elika, hindi ako, hindi ako marunong magsalita, hindi ako pwede mag, maging pulpit minister. Sister Elika, ano ako, I'm very shy. I'm very shy lang. But did you know that you can serve God wherever you are? Ang sabi po sa Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Then we will jump po to 23 and 24. Ang pagsuserve po sa Panginoon ay hindi lang po sa context lang din po ng church. Serving God has to be your lifestyle. Worship has to be your lifestyle. Ano po ba sabihin ng lifestyle? It is the way that you live your life. Worship is not just on Sundays, but it is every single day. Worship is not just about singing and clapping your hands. Worship is not just about yung emotions po natin. But worship is a commitment. Worship is our decision to honor God and to serve Him above all. Amen. Kahit po sa Colossians 3, 17, Tapos, uh, mag-jump po tayo sa 23 and 24. Sabi po dito, Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever you do, 
naglalaban, nagmamap ng floor. You can do it for the glory of God. Amen. And that is serving God. You do not need to be, uh, ano, uh, some of us, kasi po, di ba, meron pong stereotype na mga Filipino po, magagaling kumanta. Meron po talaga, <laughs> di ba, mga tao, hindi po pwedeng kumanta. Hindi po, parang nagtutula po sila. But still, you can still serve God in whatever you're doing. Amen. In the way that you are kind sa inyong neighbor, in the way that you're you are serving yung you, inyo po mga employers, and if you're doing it unto God, that is your reasonable service unto God. And then we jump to verse 23. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Let's look at the New Living Translation, Kuya. Colossians 3, 23. Work hard and cheerfully at whatever you do as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Verse 24. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and the master you are serving is Christ. So you work po ninyo sa inyo po mga employer. If you are doing it unto God, God is pleased with that. Amen. God is pleased with that. And ibig sabihin din po noon, dapat po, kahit na example po, no, masungit ang inyong employer. <laughs> you will still serve faithfully because you are treating it as you are serving God through that job that you have. Amen. Amen. You are honoring God by doing that. Kaya po, go lang ng go. Persevere lang po tayo. Let's work hard for the glory of God. Amen. 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 So yung po ang pagsaserve natin sa Panginoon. And then, uh, last verse po for this point, for point number three, to worship God is to serve Him, is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. So the master that you are serving is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ibig sabihin, hindi na lang din po pwede, pwede na. Pwede na yan. <laughs> okay na yan. Dapat po, the very best, because God deserves our best. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and oh money. God. Whoops. She said, God, don't talk about money. I know you both, the Bible is very clear. God should be number one. How you spend your money and who you spend your money on, it will indicate who is your God in your life? Amen. Kung binibigay niyo na lang po sa Panginoon yung mga leftovers po ninyo, I'm very sorry. I'm not the one saying it po. The Bible is saying it. That you cannot serve two masters. It's either you serve God or you serve money. Okay? Ang sabi po dito, that if you truly love God, you will give Him your resources as well because you know it did not come from you. Meron po talaga mga tao, hindi po nila naintindihan yun. Ang nasa mind po nila, I worked hard for this money. I, I, umiyak ako, nag-sweat ako, lahat na lang. May uhu pa, whatever. <laughs> this is my money. But, but I will ask you, who gave you the strength to work? God. Who gave you that job? God. Who brought you here to Singapore? God. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya, what talaga? Kaya, please. Airplane brought you to Singapore. Alam niyo po talaga, it's very important now we deal with this kasi alam niyo po ba the the final barrier po I think with many people from believing in God is yung pagigive po Amen ang pera po So ay nila hindi ko na mag-church kahit na na, na kahit na na-touch na sila by the presence of God but once tithes and offering yes. mag-share na about giving ayoko na diyan Yes true but God is telling us, if you truly want Him, if you truly want to experience His presence in your life, you have to go all the way. Yes. Hindi mo pwedeng isang, isang feet sa mundo, isang feet sa, sa Panginoon. Ano po, marunong kayo mag-split? Ano ba? <laughs> <laughs> Dapat po, all in all. Yes, amen. All in all sa Panginoon. You cannot serve God and money. Yeah, Dapat mama. po, everything that we have should it's be given God. to God. Kaya nga po God, di ba? Ang dali-dali po magsabing God, you are my God. But when it comes to actually showing Action. God that He is God in your life, ayaw nyo na. Yes. Okay God, hanggang dito ka lang. 
this is my this is my zone. Wag kang lalapit dito. <laughs> my territory. But if God is your God, yeah, He has so, to have everything. Truly. Every aspect of your life. Your relationships. Everything. He has to be God. So lastly po, last point for today. So yun po ang point number three to worship God is to serve Him. So if you cannot serve God in money, you must do everything for the glory of His name. Lastly po, to worship God is to seek Him. S-E-E-K. Seek God. <clears throat> to worship God is to seek Him. Seek God. Um, madami pong mga tao, especially pag Filipino po, no? um, ang understanding po natin ng pag-worship sa Panginoon, dati po, dati, no, is pupunta tayo sa church on Sundays. Tapos, i-dedicate natin ng maybe two hours, tapos, alabas na tayo, and then from Monday to Saturday, lawn, no? Yun, no? Tapos, pabalik na naman Sunday. Yun, cycle na naman. But to worship God is to seek Him every, every day. day. Amen. Amen. Psalm 53 verses 1 and 2. Psalm 53 verses 1 and 2. Basahin po natin. New Living Translation. Okay. Ano ka lang po yan? It's okay. Only fools say in their hearts there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. No one does good. Verse 2. God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if there is even one with real understanding, one who seeks for God. God. There are people in your life po na magsasabi, wala namang yatang Diyos eh. Ipipray ka, wala pang answer, o tinan mo. Tagal-tagal mo na pinapag-pray na magkaroon ka ng lupa o magkaroon ka ng bahay. Di pa nangyayari, di ba? Baka wala naman talagang Diyos. Meron na. <laughs> But God tells us here in verse 2, He is seeking, He is looking for people who truly want Him. Who truly are seeking after Him Amen. and His will in their lives. I would like to ask you this morning, if God were here with us, like physically, nandito siya, and He searches our hearts, makikita po ba niya sa atin po someone who is seeking after Him? Will he see in us that heart that desires for more of him every single day? As I put it, God looks down from heaven. And my prayer is for Horizon Church and Ministries, among members po natin, attendees po natin, will be people who seek after God. Will be people who are hungry for more of God. Will be people who will not even care anymore about anything else but just God's purpose, God's will. Lord, if you say no, then no, I will not go forward. If you say yes, then yes, I will go, Lord. Basta, I will follow you. Ganun po. That kind of desire, that kind of life that seeks after God. Asabi po sa 1 Chronicles 16, 11. Not sure if I wrote it down. Did I write it down? Okay, First Chronicles 16.11 Ano po ang sabi dito? Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Not just in good times, but especially when things are bad in your yes, life. Yes, amen. Yung, ganun po natin malalaman kung sino po talaga ang totoong kristyano. Who do we run to when we have problems? Who do we run to when we have a need? Who do we trust on to provide for us? That will show you who is your God. Amen. So if you're seeking comfort in another person instead of seeking comfort from God, that shows you who is your God. Amen. The Bible says, seek God continually. Kahit na mahirap, kahit na hindi mo feel, kahit na masakit, you will seek God because you know that it is only in God's presence that you will find peace. Amen. It is only in God's presence that you will find joy. Amen. Ano yung po na-realize ko po lately? Kahit na po, no, ang, uh, kahit na po, we are surrounded by loving people. Even though we are surrounded by people who love us and we know they love us or who care about us, at the end of the day, they cannot make us truly happy or satisfied.